I salute you all from where you are watching me from. My name is Jafet. Welcome to Kingdom Talk. This is where we discuss matters of faith, our relationship with God, and the very many biblical principles that we learn in the Bible for the advancement of the kingdom and our very own lives. One of the most important things for every believer is to always have something to look forward to. Waking up in the morning without a plan or without something to look forward to puts you at the risk or at the expense of nature. The emptiness may overwhelm you if you have nothing in your mind that you're looking forward to. <laughs> now, I know, I know, I know, each and every one of us, we have a lot of things that we look forward to. I mean, we have our jobs that we love to wake up and go to each and every single morning. Our friends that we want to hang out with and spend and have good times with. The genes that we want to go and spend. Each and every one of us has something that they are always looking forward to. Our businesses, you know. There is always something you're looking forward to. But you see, that is not the problem. What I'm highlighting today is that there is something we need to add into some of those things that we look forward to. Today, I want to introduce to you, my brothers and sisters, something called solitude or separation. Many names that are used only to highlight this one very thing. Uh, some call it isolation, some call it um, um, separation, solitude. Uh, lockdowns, whatever it is, it's a moment whereby one is either uh, willingly or imposed upon to be separated for some time. Did you know that solitude is one of the most important, rather most powerful correctional tool that it has been adopted globally as the humane way of punishing criminals? Why does this happen? We need to look at that. Now, don't get me wrong. I am not trying to say that we all need to commit crimes so that we can end up in prison. That is not the point. No, I want us to highlight what is this about confinement or solitary that is so important that prisoners are put through so that they can change. So Mark chapter 1 verse 35 says, very early in the morning, when it was still that Jesus went out of the house into a solitary place where he prayed. Now Jesus being our model in the kingdom of God found time in his busy ministry schedule to be able to separate himself from the disciples, from all the people and from all the noise so that he can do something very important, so that he can pray. Now there are two things that we need to learn about solitude. The first one is how you view solitude and the second one is what you do in solitude. You answer these two questions and your solitude period, whether in post or you are chosen to take the time aside from everyone, will become fruitful. Now, let's break this down. Jesus went into a solitary place to pray. What is prayer? Prayer is basically talking to God and allowing God to talk to you. This means Jesus separated himself so that he can go and hear his purposes from God for the day. Jesus went out very early in the morning before he did anything else so that he can speak to God, so that God can show him what it is that he needs to be doing for that specific day. This is important. Basically, what you're saying is that Jesus woke up very early in the morning so that he can go and touch base with God so he can see what Father wants him to do that day, what the purpose is for him to achieve that very day. Well, if Jesus embraced solitude and used it to his advantage, I think it is very important for us to be able to freely welcome solitude, actually, to create solitudes of our own so that we can be able to go and self-search ourselves and understand exactly what God wants us to be able to do in our lives. Listen, currently, a lot of people at one point or the other, you have found yourself in a sort of separation, in a sort of isolation, in a sort of solitude. Maybe from uh, your family in a different nation, maybe uh, from your friends in a different city and there's a lockdown and you can't really go to that city. Maybe you can't even get out of your own house. Maybe some of you have been uh, found uh, in isolation, maybe in your own houses. You can't really leave your house and you have to spend a very lengthy period of time alone in the house. And some of us have really decided or rather have found themselves in depression because of this. Some have looked at this separation totally uh, like punishment. Some are even getting mental problems because some people are breaking down. It should not be so. Brothers and sisters, isolation or solitude should not be so. It can be used to your good, brothers and sisters. Let us look at how Jesus used it. Let us apply the same principle that Jesus used to our fruitfulness and fruitfulness in the kingdom of God. So today, I want to introduce us to the five eyes that will help us be very fruitful in any separation or solitude that we ever find ourselves in. The first one is this. I need this separation, I need this solitude, I need this isolation to be able to rediscover my purpose with clarity. 
I need it so that I can be able to meditate, so I can see clearly. I can pray and understand what it is that God wants me to do with my life. The second one is like so. I will read my Bible, I will fast and I will pray during my separation so that I can nourish, I can strengthen my spiritual life so that I can be able to become more productive. Number three is that I will learn something new. I will take advantage of this isolation period. I will be able to learn something. Go online, go to your kitchen, uh, do an exercise, do something you've never done while you are outside there in the frenzy and in the fancy of the people. Pray, learn a new language, learn a new art, take a course that you can do online. Learn something new so that by the end of the lockdown, by the end of your isolation, by the end of the period of your separation, you will come out fruitful. Number four and very important, I love it. I will be happy all by myself because I am my own best friend. And see, I am not lonely. I am alone with God in the same house. So we are gonna be happy. God and I are gonna be happy together because we are making ourselves better. You are becoming better because God is with you right where you are. Last and not least, I will come out stronger because God is with me during this separation. Brothers and sisters, you are not alone. Each and every time that you take apart from the noise, from the bouncy of the crowds and everything, you refine yourself, you see better, you hear better. You learn a lot when you are in separation. You find your purpose when you are in separation. Apply these five principles in your life today. Choose to have a totally different outlook of isolation, of solitude. Do not be all cast down if you find yourself thrust in your period of solitude or in a period of isolation. Embrace it. And each and every time that you are free, always find time to separate yourself for a length of time so that you can be able to rediscover your purposes with God, so that you can be able to hear God clearer. Embrace this and keep your head high. Keep your head high because you know one thing, God has your best interest at heart and that you are gonna make it because all things must work for your good because you are loved and called by God for the purposes of his kingdom. Well, that's it for me today. Feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Subscribe to our channel, like, share the video as widely as possible with all your friends and family. And up until next time, may the Lord really bless you.